If you've been enjoying our free The Reason for Everything podcast, please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all platforms or wherever you get your podcasts. Panting so much, probably because I gave him a peanut butter cracker. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Digested. His like little liver can't handle the salt. First ever dog to throw up on my podcast. Honestly, maybe. It's okay. He's not throwing up on one of mine. So. Knock some blood right now. Yeah. It'll be a good clip at least. Honestly, it would. Yeah, yeah. Clickbait. There you go. What's your most viral clip you posted? My dates for sure. Yeah. Like, I like broke up with a guy right after Valentine's Day, the day after. Ooh. It was a little rough looking back. Yeah. But I just like really didn't feel it. He like brought Archie a, a cookie, hmm. like a Valentine cookie. Yeah. Was that like icky for you or? No, I mean, I really cared about him as a human. I liked him as a person, but I didn't feel a romantic connection. Mm. And I didn't want to lead him on. Yeah. Interesting. Because dates are expensive. Yeah, that's, fair. that's a very you know thoughtful I mean? thing to think about. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't think that way. And I mean, Bloomberg wrote an article about the cost of all my dates. So yeah. I was thinking in like a different, a different way. All right. I want to, I want to, all right. That's another one. That's good stuff. Right, Are we going to roll? Let's ready. do it. Okay. Um, let's start on the wide. Why not? Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. Welcome back to R for E, the reason for everything podcast. Very excited for today's episode, another in-person episode for you all. Today's guest is Marn Haugo. Mm -hmm. Really, really excited for our conversation today. We got connected on Instagram uh, a couple weeks ago, which I feel like that's the only way I've been getting connected to people these days. It's a good way. Fellow podcast host. Yes, We've Crowdsourcing Love. Crowdsourcing Love podcast. Be sure to tap in. I'll drop it in the show notes. First ever dog on my podcast before, so our free uh, temporary mascot, Archie's joining us on the couch. Yay. Get the audience up to speed. Tell us a little bit about who you are what you do, the context that my audience needs to know about you to uh, get us up to speed. Yes. So I'm Marin Haugo. I am Life of Marin NYC. Excuse me. I have a cold right now. You can probably hear it on Instagram. And I'm a dating influencer. I went on 28 dates in February last year, so almost a year ago. And I went from like basically 80 followers to 40K followers in a month. It went super viral. And then since then, I have a podcast called Crowdsourcing Love. And then I also have a matchmaking and dating consulting company. And it's called Mar Dating that I started with one of my good friends. And then I also have a dating journal that's about to launch. Super excited to dive yeah. into that. Before we do so, before we started filming, we were talking about, you know, how your job didn't exist. The right. job you have currently a couple of years ago just wasn't a thing. Right. You grew up in the Midwest. Minnesota. In Minnesota. Okay. Mm -hmm. Growing up, what did you want to do? Did you ever think you were going to, like, influencer weren't, influencers weren't things when you were a kid? Or no. any of us were kids, really. Did you want to be a, you know, celebrity? Did you want to be a, a dating coach? What, what, was, uh, what was that like for you as a kid? That's such an interesting question. I definitely did not grow up thinking I should be a dating coach. But I think I always kind of liked attention. And I, of course, like, like every other kid wanted to be, like, a pop star or, like, be famous. And then once I hit adulthood, I never really thought it would happen. Like, yeah. it wasn't something that I, like, wrote in my diary every night about. Um, but I just had a really good idea, and it hit, like, right place, right time. Crazy. Are you – yeah, very interesting. Are you a middle child? You said you love your attention. Are you a So child I'm what? the youngest daughter. Okay. And then I have a brother who's five years younger than me. Got it. So it's almost like they say that it starts over after five years. Okay. So he's more like a firstborn because of the age gap but i am a middle child i, I got what you're saying yeah okay. and then you went to school and did you go to university of minnesota or was that for grad school that was grad school okay where'd you go to you did your research okay. so i went to my undergrad at concordia college okay. um it's like a private liberal arts school in moorhead minnesota and it's crazy because moving to the east coast i did not understand how big of a deal schools were until coming out here and mm. everyone's like oh my god what school did you go to and i'm like yeah. why do you care you know right right now before we uh, you know, started rolling here. You were talking about how the old Marn would have, you know, really wanted to switch things up with the group that was in here before, mm -hmm. and, you know, been a little bit more type A. Yes, strict. When, <laughs> maybe, maybe more strict, maybe more type A. What was, were you always, you know, that, that way? You said it's been a transition for you over the last couple of years. What's, uh, what's that journey been like for you? Was that like a thing you learned in school? Was that moving to New York? I think I'm just naturally somebody who's 
a gar- like outgoing or gregarious. I don't have trouble like saying something. If I see something, I'll say something. But n- not in a caring way, hopefully. Like that's not the goal. I'm not somebody who's like whipping out my phone and like shoving it in people's faces. But more so like I think it's kind of like maybe my middle child or youngest child syndrome where like uh like you have to say something if you want to get your needs met. And so yeah, I definitely think I've matured a lot in the past couple of years. But when the group was sitting here and we're waiting to record and we're already behind schedule my inclination because i'm situationally aware i would expect other people to be thoughtful as well and so my inclination was just to be like are you guys wrapping up here just to like facilitate them to exit so we could start the podcast but instead i just held my tongue because it's your podcast first of all and second of all like i want i told you this just before you asked this question but i want to build bridges this year not burn them and like I don't know who they are and like maybe it doesn't matter if they're important or not important by the way they could be anybody but yeah. like maybe taking a pause and not reacting is like the better route long term yeah for my reputation for my life etc sounds like Archie's agreeing with you over there yeah but... he's he's proud of his mom right now so build bridges not burn them yep I feel like that's great advice for so many people and it's really easy to I feel like write people off these days yeah for whatever reason whether it's in the street someone bumps into you the wrong way right whether it's you know towards yourself you know if you you mess up or you're, you do something cringe or whatever it is it's easy to talk negatively negatively towards yourself yeah or to a, a group or a broader you know mm-hmm. broader audience and I think that's one of the things that I really like to think about in the context of my podcast too yep is you know there's a reason why these people might have been lollygagging out or there's a reason why someone totally. might have you in the street but it's so easy to think that you know things are happening to you and not for you, you know? Right. And so like taking it personally yeah. and it's like, by the way, they were not trying to hurt anyone. They right. were a great group of people. They just like were having fun and talking and they were caught up in their own moment. And so, yeah, I think like sometimes like stepping outside of yourself and being like, people aren't out to get you. People aren't doing something to like harm you. They're just living their lives. And if it like happens to interfere with yours, like take a breath. I yeah. think that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Not picking on the podcast group before us. They were fantastic. No, the they way. were. Just... And they were nice and smiley. Yeah. I wasn't a smiley back. That's okay. That's but okay. I but I still contained my emotion. You did. Yeah. And, and we made it here. It's okay. And we're here we are. So as we were getting started here, you're talking about, you know, your claim to fame this time a year ago mm-hmm. and how much your life has changed in the last year. I've, you know, done my research, done my digging for as much as I could on, yeah. you know, socials and whatnot, but get us up to speed so at what point did you decide you wanted to go on 28 dates in 28 days you wanted to hold yourself accountable the dating world is so different today than it was when you were graduating school when i was graduating school yeah get us up to speed in terms of you know your ethos of the last year or so as you've been going on this journey so i was 31 i was super single it was like the end of january and i i had just started to vlog so vlogging is like video blogging where i would kind of like do a day to day in my life type of situation and the vlogs were fun but i'm like i kind of want to do like a series or like do something that i can like hold my account myself accountable with and so like i saw people doing like weight loss vlogs or like fitness vlogs and i'm like let's do a dating vlog Hmm. and it was like the end of january and i texted my friend and i'm like i think i'm gonna go on 28 dates in february and she immediately texted me back because she's in media too she's an influencer already and she's like maybe do 14 like like be realistic with yourself like set yourself up for success and i'm like no i'm fucking going for it and that's one thing about me i'm like very bold and when i decide to do something i'll just go for it full send and so i went online and i like posted a video i'm like i'm going on 28 dates in february and as soon as i posted that video i knew i was onto something because the video it wasn't on instagram it was just on tiktok and it went super viral how far are we talking like i would say like thousands of people are starting to follow me and like the view like like tons of views and like you can always because i I had gone viral before with other types of videos and so you can always tell when a video is going to go viral because it like it's like so quick and it's crazy numbers and um the thing that was different with this video was that it also translated to more followers Mm. because i had millions of views on other videos before but i never got new like or got some followers from it but not like thousands at a time and so i knew i was onto something 
but I kept it on TikTok at first because I was like, I don't want my friends and family to see this. Like Instagram feels like more like millennial. Right, like right. it feels like the people you know will actually see it. And then uh, finally I was just like, it was going so viral on TikTok that I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to put it on Instagram, which thank God I did because my following's even bigger on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Instagram is a better place for community. And so basically I decided this on like January 28th and then by like two days later, it was February 1st. And so I like pushed myself. I went on all these magical dates. I like found love. I had my heart broken. All of these things happened in the course of a month. And that just shows you like how quickly your life can change when you decide to take radical action. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I resonate with so much of that in terms of taking action. And- yep. I feel like there's a common misconception with me and my message for reason for everything of, oh, you're mm-hmm. just thinking that stuff's going to come and happen to you. Yeah. But I think the key piece of what I, at least I'm trying to think through further and, um, and talk about on this show is like there, I firmly believe there's a reason for everything, but you know, you have to put yourself out there. You have to get into action in order to yep. see what those things are. Yeah. And if you just stay cooped up all day and don't get out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. you're never going to realize what those, you know, serendipitous moments are because the only way you realize that is by you know seeing what's on the other side of uncomfortable i agree and you have to take risks yeah. by the way a 31 year old woman going on the internet saying i'm going on 28 days in february it could have gone a very different direction yeah but like that's the thing i took a major major risk and now i have a podcast now i have yeah. a business now all of these people have come into my life my life and it's crazy whereas a year ago none of this existed sorry that's archie he's the worst archie Sorry, I'm like yelling into the microphone. Um, but yeah, take risks, take action. And all of New York rallied behind me. Literally, I went from like, yeah, I was like on hinge for the first few dates. But then the rest of my dates came from all of these men who had seen my video being like, I want to take you on a date. Or it came from like sisters being like, date my brother. I saw your TikTok. Wow. And so it was like, I think when you aspire to something and you put it out there, I think this is a quote from The Alchemist where it's like the whole universe conspires with you Mm -hmm. and you just have to be bold enough to like say what you actually want and take action towards it. Yeah, preaching to the choir. I love The Alchemist, love that type of reading. I've been so in. I've talked about it a bunch on this show. And yeah, the universe starts, uh, as soon as you start to commit, the universe fully conspires for you. Yeah, that that must be the quote. Okay. Um, But no, it's it's so true. Now, I want to put a pin in last February and and double click on that in a second. Before that, were you on the app stating? Were you? Mm-hmm. I know you were focused on yourself for a while. Yeah. But what was that journey like for you, being you know in your twenties and thirties in New York City? Did you come straight to New York out of school? No, I like I moved you? to New York, so I went through a breakup um, when I was like twenty eight. Okay. And then I moved to New York when I was twenty nine, and the breakup was like I was living with him. But it was like maybe gonna be my like long term forever, yeah. and it just like we weren't aligned. It wasn't gonna be you know anything forever so i was like honestly this it's now or never because like women do have a biological clock and so i really did feel like if i turn 30 and i don't fully just go for what i actually want i'm gonna like the rest of my life i'm gonna regret it um and so yeah i i turned 29 i moved to new york dating in new york was fun it's like flashy like i dated every type of guy like off of the apps or even walking down the street, guys would stop me. And I was like, it's almost like you're in like a movie or something. And so, but I never had that, that much luck. And then I got really invested in work. So I was doing recruiting. Um, and the culture, like in the sales community, it's just like really grindy and you're spending like 14 hour days, 12 hour days with your coworkers. I was just dating like fuck boys at work. And I was like, they were like, I was like 30, they were 24. Like, what was I doing? Like, that's crazy looking back. And so I think going into February of last year, I was like, okay, I need to actually be intentional. And that's why like on my platform, I'm like really into intentional dating and not just being like reactive to like your immediate environment. If your immediate environment's not serving you, like go elsewhere. Yeah. I want to talk more about headhunters to heart hunters is that right yeah. in a second here uh-huh. but before we do what is intentional dating it's buzzwordy you see it it's all over. really buzzwordy what does that mean to you to me it just means that you're dating and you know your standards you know your your dating goals so like for me i would like to get married i would like to have a family and so when i go into the first and second date like i'm qualifying that guy to make sure that he also is looking for those things but not necessarily with me 
like how could we possibly know on the first or second date that's insane yeah. but he does know what path he's taking and like people tell you who they are you just have to be able to spot what they're saying and read between the lines and and understand like is this person going down the same life path as me or not and if yeah. they're not then don't date them because you're just gonna waste your time what were you looking for when you started that journey last february same thing i'm now yeah marriage kids all of it but like it has to be the right person and like that's the thing with love it's like a little finicky like the timing has to align everything has to come together but i am currently seeing somebody and it's like early days but it's a guy who started as a friend and it turned into something more and so it's like you never know exactly how it's gonna like work out for you but i i still like went through the reps and i trusted the process and you know the stories of like from last february to now the ups and downs are wild but it's still like my story very interesting yeah now when you were dating on the apps mean people that came up to you on the street or whatever to ask you out yeah what was your you know method of choice for meeting people at that point when you were you know leading up to this period of intentional dating you were going on so like work Did you have, okay, or yeah. or dating apps gotcha. so like for me i'm not somebody who like loves to like I used to be like this where I was like, I don't want to meet people out and about. Like, it's too, like, for me, I was like, maybe like, I'm like really bold in a lot of areas of my life. But when it came to like actually like approaching a guy that I thought was cute, like, I was like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. So, unless a guy was like approaching me at a bar, which like I wasn't like going to bars all the time though, like, I would just like go to the apps because like you already know like they like how you look, you like how they look, you're there for the same reasons. Like, it was like the lack of ambiguity I loved about the dating apps. What was your app of choice back then? Hinge. Okay. Mm-hmm. How come? Just high quality people and like the the job titles that I would go for, like finance bros, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now a lot of my, you know, target demo is twenties relationship single for twenty year olds yeah. on Hinge. What recommendations advice you have for them? I would say make sure your dating app profile looks amazing. I would say like start with like a headshot of like your head to your waist um make sure it's like clear forward facing good lighting good colors next to like a body like a full body shot next to like a group photo maybe do a a mirror selfie to like show that you're sexy if you're a guy don't do a bunch of pictures where everyone else is taller than you it sounds superficial but again you want to like stand out in your photos and not just be like i have good looking friends but like choose show to choose photos that like really showcase you and then when it comes to the prompts, like I always talk about Matthew Hussey's unique pairings. So like I'm not sure I'm familiar with that. So unique pairings are like you have these two different traits that when put together makes you you uniquely or specifically special. So for example, a unique pairing could be that you love a specific band and you also love to like cook this amazing meal on Sundays or like you know what I mean? It's like yeah. They say that the specific is the universal. And so when it comes to dating apps, so many people just say the most generic shit. And like, like you're saying nothing. By saying that you love friends, family, and good communication, you might as well just leave that prompt blank because mm-hmm. everyone else is putting that same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like, sh- like stand out by like highlighting like your favorite bands or like what you like to do and like get really into the details. And paint a picture. And then people will start to be able to be like, oh my god, they seem really interesting. And it adds dimension to you. You become a full human as opposed to just like one dimensional, like random person on the apps. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's great advice. And in thinking, I was kind of imposing, you know, or superimposing your timeline of dating plus move to New York. Mm-hmm. At what point did Archie come in the picture? Oh, I got him in Minnesota. He was okay. post breakup. My ex didn't want to get a dog. I was like, I'm going to get a dog before I get into my next relationship so that no one can stop me. Okay. Like, he's part of the package. I got you. Yeah. What was dating with a dog at home like early on? Was that like, you know, topic of focus? I feel like that's probably a really easy way for people to swipe up or comment. And I imagine it was all on your profile. Oh, stuff. for sure. Yeah. Like, people would always be like, when are Archie and I going to meet? Blah, blah, blah. Um. And even the guys during my 28 days in February and beyond, they'll bring him gifts. I feel like I'm a mom. I kind of am. Where, like, the guys, like, the first time they meet him, they'll, like, bring a toy or a treat. It's kind of nice. On those 28 dates, you obviously documented a lot of it. Mm -hmm. It's all on the internet for anyone to go look up and, and see. Yes. 
which of them is most memorable for you right now that sticks out to you? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think the one that like will always stick out to me is like the date number two saga because he basically was like my second date during the journey and like we went from going on one date to like five dates in like literally a week so he kind of love bombed me and then he went away to miami and then he came back but like there was sketchy behavior along the way and then i found out that like he was probably seeing somebody because there was like women's stuff all over his apartment but with him, I think the reason why he sticks out so much is because I think I, like, probably liked him the most. Interesting. Out of everyone. And so, like, when I actually broke up with him because I could see, like, by the way, when you see the red flags, you have to break up with them. Or, like, when you see the deal breakers, you have to break up with them. Yeah. When you're intentional dating. That's a good point. You can't sweep it under the rug. Yeah. And I was doing it on a world stage where I was, like, basically telling my friends I'm like giving my followers play by plays and so i'm like i have to lead by example like i'm not gonna you know take this or stomach this or like turn a blind eye to it and so that was really hard but at the same time it's like really empowering when you start to choose yourself over somebody else a couple more questions on the 28 dates and then i want to talk about the momentum you got from that that got you to where you are today yeah you know in those in those 28 dates I see it. I don't think I don't. I'm not at the scale yet where I see negative comments. They're going on behind mm. my back, or you know, I'm sure that's it's happening there. Yeah. How did you handle that? What was that like for you, as you know, thirty some hundred old woman yeah. seeing negative comments, people talking badly about you on the internet? How did you deal with that? Was that something you took personally? I think, like on a level, yes. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I don't know why, but I kind of have thick skin and I just like didn't internalize it or I didn't read it or sometimes like I'm not on Twitter but my one of my friends would text me and be like you're going viral again on Twitter like and like there was like a troll coming after me and people being like she looks old but like here's the thing it's like I've been told by people that I look like I'm like 40 years old and I've also been told by people that I look like I'm 20 years old it's like okay which one is it I've been like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like everyone has like a has an opinion and it's like fine, like, but it's like not really my business. I think that the hardest part was like my family and mm. when they would read the comments and worry and I just would have to like literally coach them and be like, don't read the comments or if you do read them, just know that like those people like they probably have a worse off life and like don't overthink it and yeah. just know that I'm not overthinking it because yeah. I wasn't. I had so much more good than bad. And a lot of times, like, the way you know you're making an impact in the world is when you get the haters. Hmm. You know? Yeah. And I, I, uh, sorry, (laughs) I'm, like, literally stuttering. But I know I'm making, like, okay, wait, let me retract that. You may have to edit this part. I know that, okay, wait, sorry. I'm, like, literally dying. I'm not having a brain aneurysm. I'm okay. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that I was acting so much so much in alignment with my own like ethos Mm. and like i felt like i was fully aligned from start to finish that like if people hated the way i looked okay whatever i can't control that but i was controlling what i could control and i felt like i was acting throughout the 28 dates with integrity and holding myself up to a high standard so when the trolls came in i was never like oh my god because like i wasn't acting out of character Mm. I didn't feel misunderstood by the world because I fully was myself the whole time. That's so good. That's yeah. so good. Your point about alignment is just so, so spot on. I think about it and I talk about it all the time. Yep. I was going to bring up even before you said that, uh, you know who Rick Rubin is? Mm, maybe. He's, uh, right now he's known for, he just wrote a book called The Creative Act. It's like one of the best selling books right now, but he's been a producer in the music industry for mm-hmm. everywhere from anyone from the Red Hot Chili Peppers to, oh, wow. um, to Jay-Z to Adele, like the whole spectrum of music. He's just like, the person whose ear you want to get into for music. Wow. But point being, he talks about how important it is to just be authentic with your release and you can't worry about how, you know, listeners or whoever your audience is going to receive the music because as long as you're doing what's authentic to you, that's all that matters. Oh, wait, I love that. Yeah. And I feel like I was doing something similar yeah. in that moment in time. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy to think about how I, I, I firmly believe that the people that are able to 
take off and be the most successful and success in air mm-hmm. quotes are the ones that are the most authentically themselves, whether it's in music and acting and podcasting and being an internet creator, whatever mm-hmm. it is, entrepreneur, yeah. which yeah. I know you don't like that word, but entrepreneur. Yeah. It's the people that are acting in the most alignment because they're being true to themselves. Yep. I agree. To that end. So you wrap up your 28 dates. Yep. It was more than 28, wasn't it? There were more because like I did my 28 dates in February and then I continued the saga because there was like storylines that had to play out. Okay. So I really like vlogged intensely for February and March. And then I had to take a step back because I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. What was life for you at work? And then at what point were you ready to, at what point did you start, at what point did the wheels start turning for, you know, hey, this could be more than just a fun little vlog series? So I was really like, I like left my job pretty quickly because I was going to leave anyways. And I wanted to like see it through and I saw the momentum. So I was like monetizing almost immediately. Nice. But I've had in like I've had businesses in the past. Like I've had like an Amazon business. I saw the key. The yeah, keys, yeah, yeah. It's like so embarrassing. But I saw a gap in the market. So for me, like I was already like planning on leaving my job. And so it was, I just like did it faster mm. than expected. And I was instead of getting a new job, I just like doubled down doubled down on my venture mechanically speaking new york city is not an easy place yeah. to you know pay bills cover rent yeah when you're an entrepreneur let alone yep in any city let alone in new york at any point where you're like oh crap I, yeah i might have jumped ship too early yeah kind of i mean like right away i was doing brand deals and i was like a tough negotiator because i had friends in the industry mm. And so, like, I wasn't being like, oh, I'll take $500. I was like, I'll take, like, 3500 minimum per video. Like, right. I was, like, pretty, like, savage. And that might be low. That might be high. I don't really know. But I was just going You're based upon my friends. Yeah. And so I was hustling and, like, like, getting by. And then I started to realize, like, oh, shit. Like, I don't know if I want to be on the hamster wheel of, like, being an influencer with no, like, call to action. And that's where I started to like conceptualize Mar, which is our matchmaking dating consulting company. And I was like, like, I want to at some point when I have a family, I don't want to have to like broadcast like every last detail of like me and my husband's relationship. And so if I decide to kind of step away from the spotlight, like how can I like leverage this amazing community and serve them? Because yeah. it, also there were people coming to me being like, could you matchmake me or could you set me up with other people from your community because my community attracted a bunch of like young professionals who are like-minded who are you know looking for similar things and have similar values to myself and they want like something intentional and long term and so it was kind of like a necessity because I needed money but it was also like my community was asking for it um it does that answer your question 100 percent. yeah and then so you quit your job you're Mm -hmm. doing your brand deals yep at what point did you say, hey, I'm going to launch more and then, and, and that sort on those services? Yeah. So like this summer, okay. Um, I was like, I really want to pivot and like figure out a way to, because like, yeah, a brand deal you can get, unless you're like Alex Earl or like somebody who's like pretty, pretty major, the brand deals aren't like massive payouts. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to be pretty massive to get those like, millions of dollars or whatever or even hundreds of thousands and so I was like I want to build something that's actually going to be like scalable and sustainable and not just relying on like a viral moment here or there and so then this the summer I like conceptualized Mar and it was actually I was on a date with a guy who used to go to matchmakers and he was like you he's like you're sitting on like a two two million dollar business with like your community and everything he's like you could easily have like a cash flow or cash positive business. And like he, he was a CEO too. I dated multiple CEOs, but New York has a very like founder centric culture. So it's not weird. Like now I'm a CEO. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's so. not like I'm like the CEO of Pepsi. You know I what I mean? You. Like, so when you're dating a CEO, there's different levels. Saying I dated multiple CEOs is good clickbait though. So it okay. is good. That is good clickbait. And this one was actually a pretty legit one. He didn't found the company. He okay. actually stepped in as a CEO, but, he like he gave me a lot of business advice yeah and that's the cool thing about new york you can when you're dating these men you can learn a lot from them 
after you break up with them or they break up with you, are there any any of those folks that you kept a relationship with just as, as friends or were they mostly like, hey, don't want anything to do with you, especially through the documentation of it all? Yeah, I mean, I never identify anyone. Oh, fair. So, yeah. like, they're never outed. A lot of the guys will out themselves. Okay, got it. So I had multiple, multiple men do that where, like, Probably good class they, for them, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like a little like, oh, I was one of the guys, or like I was the writer, I was the comedian, like whatever. Um, so these people would out themselves. Mm. I would never out them. Yeah. Um, what was the question though? Uh, keeping in touch with with people you used to date. Um, so I am like loosely in touch, but I think it depends on how like far down the rabbit hole we went together. Yeah. If it was like one or two dates. The first guy I went on a date with, we went and got coffee this summer. Like, during my 28 dates in February, he was date number one. And, like, we're good because we only went on one date. Yeah. But I think it gets tricky when, you know, feelings are involved. And I'm somebody where, although I'm trying to build bridges, not burn them this year, I feel like it's not fair, you know, if I break up with somebody to then string them along yeah. and keep giving them attention and vice versa like if someone breaks up with me i i also get to heal and move on and not have to like interface with them a ton yeah i do believe in eventually coming back together and being friends once like both parties have fully like moved mm. on interesting yeah do you i, I think so I, don't, I haven't really thought i haven't yeah. really thought about that um i'll report back to you yeah I but it. i am quite, i am like still like instagram friends and like whatnot with a lot of the guys yeah. who were in the series yeah yeah you talked about or at the start of this we talked about you know timing is everything for you you had some amazing momentum that came from this you talked about bloomberg wrote an article about you yeah which is crazy and bustle and bustle yep. and a ton of other uh outlets yeah. on top of other people that just promoted your amazing content that you put out last year yeah you really i mean there are a lot of people that kind of let the moment pass and they just don't never have that opportunity again yeah Starting Mar, built, you know, leveraging your network that you mm -hmm. built out. Mechanically speaking, how are you able to, you know, put yourself to the grindstone every day? Yeah. And actually, like, make yourself build this business. I mean, the CEO you were dating said it was a $2 million cash flow in business. Mm -hmm. How did you actually go about doing that, building that, getting out of the corporate job and executing? I think, like, just, like, picking the right people is the start. And so person who i co-founded mar with she and i actually met in the recruiting space and so like she was the perfect business partner i would not have started it without her because like i had this idea but like if you get into bit like business or bad with the wrong person like you're screwed mm -hmm. like you have to like trust them and it was a blessing that i had worked with her for two years so i knew what her work ethic was and i knew like what she could do in like uh professional setting because i think a lot of people start a business with a best friend and then they're like wait like i love you as a friend but i hate you as a colleague but because we started as colleagues and then became friends like i knew she was you know she yeah. had the ability um and then just like i'm really driven i'm really ambitious i understand the opportunity um and i think that like we're like moving into a creator economy where like a lot of creators are actually, you know, like they have physical products or services or whatnot. And I think that just like knowing that if I if I squandered this opportunity, that'd be ridiculous. Like I'm really, really motivated and I enjoy it, too. I don't know if that's a good answer. No, but it's, Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's absolutely awesome. You know, as we round out here thinking about 24 and beyond. Yeah. What are you most excited about with your business? I know the podcast is taken off you've had some awesome guests this year yeah last year into this year the matchmaking business is headhunters to uh to heart hunt. heart hunters i think that yep. is super uh, super clever especially given your uh past roles and then first yep. rounds on me is that your business as well or are you no they're they're one of, they're my main sponsor nice. for my dating app okay or not my what am i saying like okay i worked all day and now it's like <laughs> no late judgment. they're my main sponsor for my podcast okay they are a dating app and they found me really early on in my journey and they were one of like my first major sponsors for nice. like my videos and so I like became close with the CEO and again like part of being like a influencer I'm doing air quotes because I think I have like 41k followers right now or something like that but one of the cool parts of it is that it opens so many doors to so many really really cool relationships 
where like I can reach out to people that I want to like interview and like they'll say yes or like I get invited to cool parties or like whatever so like just socially and professionally it's been like such a blessing too because like I've just moved here from Minnesota like two two or three years ago and all of a sudden like one of my good friends is like Lindsay from We Met at Acme and okay. Anna Kai and like again it's like I'm with them I'm friends with them because I think they're cool amazing people it's not about like the clout chaser part of things because those people are more LA anyways you know what I mean yeah. in New York everyone's pretty high functioning no one really cares like influencer business person finance person whatever like everyone's like excellent so you get less of that chase but like it's just cool like how it's kind of propelled me in such a way hmm. that's super good yeah as we close out here what would be one piece of advice you'd give to your call it 25 year old self Ooh. one piece of advice trust the process oh uh, yeah can you explain a little more i think that people think they panic they turn 25 and they're like if i don't have my entire life figured out like i'm just gonna be a loser like whatever i think that like i was 31 when this all happened to me my life changed in a month and so again everything leading up to that magical month was like building the person who i was so that when i got there i was ready and so trust your process like it's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen one of my guests, Jeff Evans, he said, we're all just being delivered to our destiny. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, I really, really, I, I think about it all the time. That's like the same, same, but like way better said. So I might actually steal that. I like trust the process too. Yeah. It's a little bit more, you know, 20, 26 year old white boy. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Delivered to your destiny. Uh, so yeah. I, I resonate with that. And yep. maybe it's because of, uh, because of Joel Embiid, the basketball player who said that for a while, but it is what it is. I'm dead. You. <laughs> You have a bunch of different business ventures going on mm -hmm. right now. You don't like the term entrepreneur, but you're an entrepreneur. I am. I just think it's cringy when people make videos and say, a day in the life of an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I did that one time. So, like, I can say it because I'm talking shit about myself, too. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever think you'd archive your old videos? I think you're going to keep them up for Oh, I have archived some of them. Yeah. One of the guys I dated, he, like, self-identified as the brand I gave him. Interesting. And so, like, I archived that. Gotcha. Because I was like, oh my god, like this is my journey, not yours. Go build your own brand. Last question for you. Yeah. And I'll let you and Archie get out of here because Archie's, like, Archie's looking very bored over there. I'm sorry, he's, Archie. He's sleeping. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what, what, what would, I guess, if you were in a guy's shoes and you were taking someone out yeah. in New York City, okay. what would be the ideal first date you'd want to set up just to really wow this person? This is like a, uh, we, we call them prospect. This is a prospect. This is someone you're really, you're not trying to just, wow on the first date but you're or you're trying to wow them on the first date and this is someone that you could see like long term what would, what would be like an ideal first date that's a good one up? um so i would say like find like a sexy cocktail lounge and plan it early enough where like you can start with like a drink get there early ask the bartender like what's good here also backing up a little bit plan it near her place mm. so it's super convenient for her to get to you're thinking of like her and it's showing that you have like a generous spirit you're thoughtful you have all these attributes that someone could see themselves like building a life with um and then get there before her so get there 10 minutes early ask the bartender what's good get a few options so that when she sits down you can recommend a few things um and then if the conversation is flowing and the vibes are going um then you can turn it into we'll make sure that she's not hungry right away like have yeah. you eaten are you hungry want to get an app Usually she'll say no, but if she says yes, then feed her if you want to wife her up. And then um, have a second spot in mind. And if, if you're vibing, she's vibing, be like, hey, we could actually go to this really cool hole-in-the-wall spot for dinner if you're, if you're free and you want to. Dinner on the first date? That's... No, but it's not like it's if it's going well. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Because then you're like, like it's turning into dinner and like everyone loves that story where it's like the first date was so amazing that like it, we like just were getting drinks but then we like we had to get dinner because we didn't want to leave and like that creates like the magic for her okay yeah i like it That's thank you do you have any feedback on that you're a guy uh i'm still trying to figure out this whole dating world i don't know yet i uh i can give you some free advice i'd I love that I'd okay love that. We'll, uh, we'll put I usually on, charge, but for you, I was gonna say we'll put it on the paywall. So yeah, to, to Mar was it Mar Services? Um, Mar Dating Club. Mar Dating Club. Yeah. But uh, no, this was awesome, and I really appreciate your time. And yeah, excited. where can folks find you to get in touch with you? 
Life of Marn NYC on Instagram. I'll plug it in the show notes. Yeah. Where else is the best place to crowdsourcing? Love is a podcast. It's like dating a relationship podcast. Crowdsourcing. So like from every angle. And then um, Mar Dating Club um, is our is our dating matchmaking services. We have matchmaking in New York, California, um, Miami, as well as like the greater Florida region. So like we're all over. Love Maybe it. coming to DC soon. Okay. Cool. So. We'll, we'll be talking. Awesome. Marn, thanks so much. Archie, thank you. WTF Media Studios, thank you guys. And we'll see you next time. Yay!